Hello and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Dr. Westman. Today is an exciting one because we're going to be talking about Dr. Westman's new book called End Your Carb Confusion. And uh, just for those of you who don't know, we've been working on this book for quite some time. Um, so we are tremendously excited about it. And um, Eric, what are your thoughts on, on uh, the book coming out? Hopefully, I think the, the release date is the 1st of December, around the corner. Yes, and I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, have you wondered why some people can eat some foods and others can't, you know? Well, that's, <laughs> so exactly, that's exactly, that's exactly why we why, do this. Why can my brother eat all of that fruit and I can't, right? Or <laughs> So this is, that's what we'll get into. Exactly. So, you know, you've written quite a few books. You've written quite a few books specifically on the topic of keto and low carb. Yet, um, as you've just alluded to now, this one is um, quite different. Uh, maybe you can just give us a little bit of why this book is a little bit different to some of the other books that you've written. Right, well, so I've been involved in books that are for medical people. That's the, the textbooks that I've helped to write and edit. And I, I've written many research papers. And that's the different skill. Uh, getting involved with the new Atkins for a new you, there were three of us who worked with a team and, and it was really kind of the Atkins flavor of how to do things. But I am an author on the new Atkins for a new you. Of course, it's now 10 years old. It was published in 2010. Um, and then I helped with the medical credibility with several books that Jimmy Moore wrote for the most part. Um, these were, this is more the style I'm interested in. It's the uh, easy uh, to understand, simple language, uh, uh, not for medical people. That, so what I have done is teamed up with a professional writer. Amy Berger is the co-author with me on End Your Carb Confusion. And so we worked together on the content and she wrote most of the detail to make it understandable. Uh, so it's a blend uh, of, of the, just a little, more so in the past i've done lots of science heavy science easy on the you know trend how to communicate it this one is really almost 100 percent. how do we communicate this clearly to a, a broad range of people not just keto friendly people uh and uh i don't we don't even have a, a reference a scientific citation in it because we thought that would be too distracting now, I know that um, something that's pretty big in this book, um, and we'll get into it a little bit later, um, but I know that there's a term metabolic flexibility, and I know that that is um, the premise of what this book is about, metabolic flexibility. Can you just elaborate on, on that a little bit? Well, you know, haven't you wondered uh, why, you know, for me, it's in, even in my family, uh, one brother could be eating tons of carbs and was very active and, and uh, another family member couldn't, uh, or you look just around, how can some people be eating certain foods and they, they appear to be healthy? So there is this metabolic flexibility and it has to do with how we handle carbohydrate. So that's where our research comes to bear. And the, it's the general consensus now that the major factor that has to be controlled for some people is carbohydrate, the sugars and the starches, not the fat that we've been taught for so long. But I hope this will help people understand why, you know, just what they're observing, uh, uh, that why some people can eat some things and be healthy. And, and at the other extreme, why some people might be unhealthy uh, and they don't know that it's because they're having too many carbohydrates. So we, we help people uh, target, you know, roughly target where their level is. Of course, the results will tell you if that was the right match for you. But metabolic flexibility is huge, and it has to do with sugar, blood sugar, insulin, and how your body responds to that. And um, one thing I can tell you for sure is that there's, um, you know, keto has exploded onto the scene, and there's a lot of you know, confusion out there. Um, there's there's um, dirty keto and lazy keto and, uh, and actually quite frankly a lot of the science is, is, is outdated there's a lot of new science that's been written so um, along with all this um, you know confusion out there um, why will this book clear up the confusion 
Right. Uh, well, it's the title, End Your Carb Confusion. <laughs> the simplification of what uh, the world sees today as keto, it's quite confusing. You know, you might think you have to have uh, keto drinks or apple cider vinegar, or uh, some companies are even just putting medium chain triglyceride or coconut oil in a product and calling it keto. And, and it trips people up because they can't handle this new oil and they get nausea and they blame the diet when really it was a product that was being sold under the umbrella of it's a keto diet. So, so what we do is teach using real food, no, no extra products. Um, and what we've, when I look back, I've been heavily influenced by the real food, low carb keto uh, that has been around for 150 years. So it started in London, England in the 1860s and then was used uh, in other countries. And then Dr. Atkins, Dr. Eads, Dr. Bernstein, these doctors kept it going without the science. They, and our group at Duke and Jeff Olick at Ohio State uh, were the ones to document the safety or, or not or, or unhealthiness of it. So we've known for about 20 years now that you can use this approach uh, even really low in carbs, and it's a safe and healthy thing to do, but others may not know that. Now, from what we've been talking about, um, one would probably imagine that this is just a book on keto, which it's not. It um, covers that, but it's not just a book on keto. And um, something that is um, pretty unique is that you, are, you have been known um, the last over 10 years uh, on page four, which is a very, very strict protocol of under 20 grams or 20, maximum of 20 grams of total carbs per day. Yet in this book, you talk about three distinct phases, phase one, two, and three, and each phase has got a range um, of, car of total carbohydrates that one could have in a day. Um, do you want to go into that a little bit? Sure. Well, um... Yes, we've done a lot of research on the keto level of carb restriction or very low carb diets. And we're one of the groups worldwide that's known for that. I do a lot of teaching of doctors and people and people who come to my clinic with diabetes uh, or who want to get things jump started as fast as they can. I'll start with that first phase uh, and that's what we're doing in end your carb confusion. You can start there if you want uh, at the same time time there's a whole body of knowledge that, of research that, that I'm seeing other people have done you know uh, and higher levels of carbs can be healthy if you're metabolically flexible um, and so it's bringing in not just the research I've done and what I've been known for but what other people have done so the Christopher Gardner at Stanford David Ludwig at Harvard the, these are the, the real scientists that I've known for a long time and we're translating this science into something that's very usable. But, you know, it's just also kind of just generally, it's generally obvious that there can be healthy people and they eat carbs. I mean, I, I don't envision a world that ever, you know, has no carbohydrate. It's just some people have to limit the amount they have to be healthy. So just to get this straight, um, you're not advocating carbs and this isn't a, you, you haven't, you're not going against what you've always um, said over the last 20 years. Um, this is just trying to fit different people, different profiles with, um, with different sort of healthy diets that one could, that one could choose. Um, obviously, uh, for people that um, have um, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, obesity, um, they would follow the keto protocol that would be known in our book as phase one, but there are other types of people that we'll speak about after that. And one thing I wanted to ask you, um, in the book it mentions that um, people could actually progress. They might actually start on, let's say, phase two or phase one, and then they could potentially progress to phase two or phase three over a period of time. Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, take uh, a case of someone who has 100 pounds of weight to lose. They have diabetes and hypertension. I'll keep them very low on the carbs until they've reversed those conditions. And then as they get more, uh, uh, more energy, most of the time they'll start exercising more. And then you're, basically the, the metabolic flexibility has changed as you've gotten rid of these underlying conditions. 
And, and you know, that, no, you don't have to have type 2 diabetes. <laughs> if most people, if you choose the lifestyle change, we can actually reverse it, eliminate it. And, uh, but you know, uh, we don't get into the weeds in this book uh, of explaining things and referencing things, you know, 10 times. It's really a simple, uh, uh, you know, teaming up with a professional writer, We're trying to make it understandable. And uh, yes, we have a table where you can fill in check marks and try to find which phase you're in. So, and it has to do with metabolic flexibility, but it's kind of like where I just want you to be able to get in and drive the car. You don't have to know how the engine works. You know, I mean, just put the gas in and drive. You don't have to check the wings for, for you know, like a plane or, you know, so we're really trying to make it understandable and to a, a broad audience of anyone really who wants to improve their health, optimize their health, uh, with diet in mind, because these are general principles. It's, it's not the fat in the food that's the bad, uh, unhealthy thing. It's the sugar and the starches, uh, and that's you know taken 20 years for the general public and consensus to come around. But we were introduced to that 20 years ago in our program at Duke. So I want to talk about that table that you mentioned in a minute, but I just wanted to also mention that. Um this particular, well, let's talk about that table actually. So, because you mentioned it, you mentioned it. Um, that table um, in the book it has got a whole bunch of um, different um, checklists that people would go down and they'd be able to see, they'd be able to read that table, fill in the table, and then identify, well, I'm on phase one, phase two, or phase three. And I also want to add, before you answer that question, is um, maybe by the, by the sound of what we've been, how we've been bringing this across, uh, nothing in this book is a high carb diet. It is all considered, even at phase three, it's still considered a low carb diet, but it's not a, a ketogenic diet, which would be under 20 grams of carbs of total carbs. So just back onto that table now, there's a checklist there. Um, how did you come to, to putting that checklist down to be able to help people identify which particular phase they would fit into? Yes, so bringing together the research of uh, not just our groups, uh, the you know keto, low, very low carb, but the moderate, and uh, yeah, so, so how you define things depends on where you've come from. Our maximum limit of carbohydrate would be seen as low for someone who has been eating high carbohydrate, but we we defined that in a paper um, I was first author on back in 2007. So that anyway, we, the, these definitions are out there, but the perception may be that it's low in carbs, but we focus on the type of carbohydrate a lot. So we're bringing in the glycemic index, the glycemic load kinds of, if you've heard of those terms, um, into the larger uh, book, because uh, there is good research showing that if you have some metabolic flexibility, that these other approaches can be very healthy to do. So in this table, if you, and so it's kind of like my approach in the clinic. If you have diabetes, high blood pressure, PCOS, uh, some other chronic medical condition that uh, the medical mainstream folks haven't been able to fix. Remember, we, we can fix heartburn, you know, in three days. And, and there are people who have been, you know, given procedures and all this for a simple condition that just changing the carbs can fix. Uh, and then depending on your uh, athletic ability and you know and tendency and i have a brother who grew up wanting to run play basketball and and all this and, and i'm tend toward to, to be the bookworm you know not doing all those things that's important and that even gets into the genetics of what's going on behind the scenes here uh, so and then age and uh whether your uh your hormonal status if you're postmenopausal or not these are all important factors that um lend to metabolic flexibility and metabolic flexibility in a nutshell is going back and forth between sugar burning or glucose burning and fat burning and you know children are very good at going back and forth between sugar and fat and and as we age in general we get less metabolically flexible what i love about this book is that um anybody can read the book i can read this book i can I can go through the table and uh, while somebody, let's say my wife, uh, might fit into phase one, I might fit into phase three. So everyone is unique and I think that's unbelievable because it gives one um, an ability to be able to, to, to 
live the healthiest life that they possibly can uh, just by answering you know some of the, the simple questions on that table so very exciting well, that, that. in my experience that that might cause a little friction <laughs> with couples and family but that's the reality is that we have different genetics different uh, metabolic flexibility and uh, you know the more we can uh, match target the food and it has to do in, in this book with the carb level the more we can match that to people i think in general the healthier and happier people will be uh, and uh, yes if you could never believe if you could give up fruit it, but if you have a metabolic flexibility to allow for fruit you don't have to give up fruit Right. Or, or, or bread or pasta or rice. That's the reserved for the folks who have no metabolic flexibility. Right. I'm with you. Um, something that I love in this book as well is that there is an analogy, um, and it's also very unique and, and specific to this book, and it's called the sound modulator. And it includes things that you are not typically known for. So, for example, you've got stress, you've got food quality, you've got exercise, you've got sleep. These are things that you are not typically known for because you're treating people for metabolic related illnesses in your, in your clinic. And if you had a dial uh, with all different knobs and one was asleep and stress and, and uh, food quality and exercise and one was diet, you've got that, di that diet dial all the way up to the very, very top and all the other dials all the way to the bottom and it doesn't really matter because what matters most is the diet. Yet when you go on to phase two and phase three, you, you know, the diet is not the 100% factor. It might come down to 85% sleep, uh, stress, food quality, exercise starts going up, which is very, very unique and something that um, is uh, a little somewhat of a departure from what um, we normally typically see from you? Well, understanding where I'm coming from in a clinical setting where most of my people, patients, clients need the first phase, they need the very low keto carb restriction. Uh, that's why I was, you know, 100% diet because, and, and I had, I really had very little belief that I would have to keep people at this level for several years. You know, so, so actually I'm sort of, I teach people who need the strictest version and then follow them over time because there are some people who need that for years or even for the rest of their life if they have no metabolic flexibility. Yes, and so I've been hammering on the medical use of a low-carb keto diet created the Keto Medicine Clinic. But now in introducing the idea of nutrition and healthy eating for the whole population, not everyone has to be that strict. And so one of the undercurrents here is that we want this to be widely read by people who, you know, are, are scared about keto that, or they don't know, or they don't, you know, they can't imagine giving up fruit or bread or pasta or grain, you know, the, you can eat those things if you have that metabolic flexibility, but we're going to be honest and, and have you learn that you might not be able to have that if you're not metabolically flexible. So um, yeah, the, the, um, the teaching of the research that we've done is really has been for the medical world, the medical use, uh, but you know, not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, it, it, it's kind of uh, surprising to me that the more we study a keto diet, just a fat burning diet, the better it looks over time, uh, but it, not everyone has to do that. And because I'm talking now through the book to people who aren't in my clinic, I think we need to address the science and that, that yes, there are other eating patterns that work really well. And uh, I want to incorporate that and just, it's not just my research I'm, I'm now translating to people. It's, it's the whole uh, nutritional knowledge that we've gained, which includes keto, but also includes higher carb levels. So basically, in a nutshell, this book is for anybody. You haven't left anybody out. Um, it's for all ages. It's for male, it's for female, uh, it's for teens. Um, it's for absolutely anybody that wants to reach optimal health. And depending on their metabolic, metabolic flexibility will depend on which phase that they go into. Um, we are not, not, like the, not like the handbook, you know, that's that thick. <laughs> it, it truly is readable, understandable, and that's 
because I teamed up with a professional writer to do that. Well, we are tremendously excited for this book. Um, it's due to launch uh, in December of 2020. Um, I think there will be a link in the description Look down below uh, for pre-sales on Amazon. We'll put that link in there in the description. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see future videos, um, please would you find us on our social media channels on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter under the name of Adapt Your Life. And if you've been watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to hit the notification bell to be alerted every time we post a new video, which is typically on a Wednesday. Uh, this is Dr. Westman and Glenn signing off for another episode of Conversations with Dr. Westman. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you.